Hi and welcome back, mitzvah number 14. It is a positive commandment to learn Torah and to teach it. Let's take a look inside. It is a positive commandment to learn Torah and to teach it, as scripture states, and you shall teach them diligently to your children. Vishinantam Livonecha. It is a religious duty that the words of the Torah should be sharp and clear in a person's mouth, that he should not stammer over them. Whether one is poor or rich or young or old, whether he is a man laden with suffering, a poor person sustained by charity, who makes the rounds knocking on doors for alms, he is duty-bound to set himself a fixed time for Torah study both day and at night. For scripture says, but you shall meditate in it day and night. And he is duty-bound to study till the day of his death. For scripture states, lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. A religious duty lies on a father, it's actually on a parent, on a father to study Torah with his son. He, the son, takes precedence over others. He also has an obligation to study with the son of his son. As scripture says, and you shall make them known to your children and to your children's children. From the time a small child begins to speak, his father is to teach him Torah saying with him the verse Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe Torah 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 Tziva Lanu Moshe as he has a duty to hire a te- and he has a duty to hire a teacher for him a woman is free of the obligation of Torah study nevertheless it is fitting for her to strive that her children should not be ignoramuses the study of Torah is equal in importance to all of the mitzvos since learning leads to action it applies everywhere at every time Everything starts with the Torah. The better we understand the Torah and the more we study Torah, the more we can understand everything else in our religion and in our religious experience. And therefore, it's essential to study Torah and to set fixed times for Torah study, no matter how difficult that might be to try to set fixed times for Torah study. Um, furthermore, furthermore, it is a mitzvah to teach one's children and one's grandchildren Torah. The obligation is not only on one's children, even after you've taught your children and they maybe you were successful and maybe you weren't. Okay, but the grandchildren is its own separate mitzvah. It is a mitzvah to teach Torah and teach the tradition to your grandchildren. That's an opportunity that, for those of us who have grandchildren, we should all be taking advantage of. We have spoken about this many times. Birthday presents, trips, everything. Find a Jewish hook in everything. Buy them a Jewish book if you can get away with it. Buy them a Jewish game. Certainly, if you're going to take them on a trip somewhere, find some Jewish site to see. doesn't matter what it is. Go stand outside a synagogue, the oldest synagogue in the town, whatever it might be. Let's find ways to inculcate our tradition and our Torah in our descendants, in both our children and our grandchildren. You will note here that Maimonides says that women are not obligated to study Torah. Um, it's still a wonderful thing to do. Uh, it's not entirely clear. This is stated a little too simply because the reality is that women have to study Torah. At a minimum, they have to study the Torah required for functioning as a Jew, right? Maybe they don't have to study like advanced Talmud. I don't know if men have to study advanced Talmud. I'm not sure that's a mitzvah either. But either way, right, uh, they have to study Torah. They have to know what to do and they have to be able to uh, educate and raise their children. Uh, obviously, this was written in a not only in a time, but in a segment of society where um, societal roles were much more clearly defined. Uh, I would argue that in this age of uh, liberation, which is a great thing, but in this age of liberation, women are uh, you know equally equally responsible to study Torah. I don't want to say equally commanded; that's tricky, but equally responsible to study Torah, and that's really reflected, interestingly, in the curriculums of day schools and high schools. Right. There are still schools where, who, who label them modern Orthodox, and, and that's, that's a fair label, but there are still a minority of schools that are, that are labeled modern Orthodox that don't teach the same curriculum to girls as to boys. However, overwhelmingly now, the same curriculum is taught to boys and girls certainly through, um, certainly through elementary school, you have pretty much the same curriculum elements, and even in high school, you're more modern you're, I should say, more modern Orthodox um, 
schools will teach the exact same curriculum. As a matter of fact, the Rav in Boston, of Salavechik, when he founded the Maimonides School, recognizing that he couldn't find two separate schools, um, he created a co-educational school where the boys and the girls studied Talmud together. It was just one class, and boys and girls were in one class, and they were treated equally. Um, the uh, Certainly in our, modern, in our modern era, our modern cultural uh, society, where women are equally educated to men, the same thing should apply to Torah study. Women should be striving for higher and higher levels of Torah study. Nowadays, within the modern Orthodox community, there are programs for women that study Talmud intensively and that study the codes and that give them an opportunity to level the playing field a bit in terms of learning. And that's only been increasing over the past decades and will continue to increase, um, and for good reason. Our girls should be as well prepared as our boys. All right, folks, thanks for being with us. Let's see, what's our, what's our next mitzvah tomorrow? Mitzvah saseh shekol echem Yisrael yichtov lo sefer Torah. It's a positive commandment that every Jew should write a Torah scroll for themselves. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it next time. We'll see that there are ways to fulfill this commandment that don't involve spending forty to $60,000 on a new Sefer Torah. Okay, folks, thanks. We'll see you next time.